Now, a bureaucratic shadow called Codex Alimentarius threatens to silence the opposition forever, both here and abroad. But Codex began innocuously enough in 1963 as a creation of two arteries of the United Nations, the Food and Agricultural Organization and the World Health Organization. Back then, nearly everyone endorsed their two major goals, to provide nutritious foods for developing nations and to shape guidelines for dangerous industrial chemicals in the food supply. Within the past decade, however, Codex Alimentarius has altered its mission dramatically, many say negatively so, to include a wide swathe of products, including dietary supplements and genetically modified organisms. Mr. Scott Tipps began serving as a US delegate to Codex in June of 2000. During the first meetings, he did everything he could to communicate with the head of the US delegation. I, in a flurry of notes, passed comments and suggestions and the like to Elizabeth Yetley, who was the American delegate there, and it made no impact. In fact, the only impact I had was to call her, her during a break and uh, basically be very tough with her about a particular clause that she was trying to remove from the final report. That particular sentence or clause basically said that the United States supports the right of consumers to have free access to vitamins and minerals, and she had unilaterally yanked that from the final reports. This attitude by Ms. Yetley, who is an employee of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, is reflective of Codex meetings in general. When the WTO, the World Trade Organization, became a reality in the 1990s, the power of Codex was heightened immeasurably. This new worldwide body, devoted solely to the harmonization of trade standards, gave Codex the enforcement capability that had eluded it for decades. Two US congressmen, a Democrat and a Republican, have a philosophical divide on free trade, but agree completely on the dangers of the WTO and Codex. Now, the WTO is said to be set up for free trade, and I happen to like free trade. I like low tariffs, and I like goods and services flowing across borders. Uh, I studied economics in college. I'm a skeptic of the whole theory of free trade, and it really crystallized around uh, the NAFTA and the WTO agreements. I am a champion of national sovereignty, so I do not like the idea of getting involved in what the founders called entangling alliances. So I remember talking uh, to uh, Mickey Cantor, the president's uh, special trade representative, and I'd studied a little bit and I said, I can't understand how we're going to bind ourselves to this agreement which has a secret dispute resolution process uh, which has no r rules regarding conflict of interest and they will essentially preempt U.S. law. And then when you go to the next step of becoming a member of the World Trade Organization, means to me that we as a people and as a Congress, uh, we give up too much of our responsibility and our prerogatives. I said, oh, no, no, you don't understand. They can't preempt our laws. I said, oh, you're right. They can just fine us for having our laws, and we can pay perpetual fines because we have laws that protect consumers of the environment, or we can repeal our laws. But now we're talking about turning it over to a world organization that's going to force harmonization. So it's, it's working as designed, as far as you're concerned, which is to protect corporate interests and uh, overrule governments and stick it to consumers. And they'll do that under the name of free trade and globalization and pretend that they're on the, on, on the side of, of, of freedom. But actually, they're, they're not. They're, they're on the side of regulations and special interests and protection of uh, certain big corporations. If there's a higher corporate good to be served by breaking the law, by having the FDA uh, you know, uh, work uh, with uh, the Codex and uh, try and drag the U.S. into this uh, nightmare, then uh, they're all for it and they're doing it. So we do what the WTO tells us, and that's why I'm very leery of the WTO, and I'd just soon we get out of the WTO. This would be like the ultimate reaching of government uh, into our personal health lives, uh, which would be unbelievable, and, and not even our government, some you know, bureaucratic, diffuse, uh, multinational, secretive government. It has been said many times that democracy is the dream of all who are oppressed the hope of those imprisoned by fear or injustice. But the sad truth 
that which is almost too sad to acknowledge, is that the betrayal of democracy began long ago, when profit replaced the will of the people and corporate lobbyists became the masters of the universe.